Okay, we have here the elusive BKM68X RGB input card. So this is what would be standard and kind of cheap on all other series of BVMs. This one is super, super expensive and rare on the A series BVMs. So according to Pat, the BVM tech, they may have only actually made 250 of these, which would mean this was probably 178 of 250. Um, this one itself, uh, just two ports in the back and covered with the metal shielding. And here's the inside of the board, which um, for the most part, a lot of these things are just off the shelf components. But what makes me think that this might not be able to be re reverse engineered is that Spartan chip. Um, I think that's programmable. Uh, and I think whatever's on there is probably proprietary Sony software that uh, you're not gonna find anywhere. But I'm going to take detailed pics and link to those as well, just in case anybody wants to give it a try. Um, the pics should be good enough to actually go through and see the circuits. Okay, let's just slide the sucker in. Screw it down for a good connection. And of course, the 75 ohm terminators need to be on the output of every one of them or else you'll get a really weird signal that won't work right. Alright, ready to go. Alright, so just starting with the basics, just a, a direct SCART to BNC adapter and then a shielded SCART cable with C-Sync output of course into a SNES uh, and it works. Um, so I'm going to bring up the HD Retrovision test suite just to show the different color bars and also test 240p and 480i. Wow, everything's extremely sharp and nice looking. And then 480i mode. So that's looking good. Um, I guess I'll now try the 240p test suite and do just do the scroll test. which I'm sure my camera isn't picking it up, but this thing looks excellent. So, uh, no problem with SNES, but that's not the console that I heard had the most issues. So let's try Genesis next. Okay, well this is the one I really wanted to test, Genesis, because I heard a lot of people online say they had problems with theirs, but it, this looks fine. Um, the only thing that might be different than, uh, than other people's is this is definitely 75 ohm C-Sync coming out. So it's, you know, no components on the Genesis as always, and then the correct components in the cable. Uh, but that might really be it. Um, other than that, it looks perfect. So I'm just baffled as to why this was working and so many other people's is not. But the monitor looks absolutely gorgeous, probably due to the fact that it has no hours on the CRT. And even composite video seems to work totally fine on this. Um, obviously, I'm playing with one hand, so excuse how I'm going to die every second, but I mean, it doesn't exhibit any of the problems that a lot of the people were talking about online. So I'm not really sure if it's software version or what the problem could be. So maybe the people who are having the problem could check their software version. Um, as you can see, it's the A20F1U, and it's a software version 1.10. And yes, that's right, CR2 operation, CRT operation time is 853 hours, which means it's brand new. So that's pretty amazing for this particular monitor. But um, maybe the software version's it, and then let me check, maybe there's a version of the actual input card. So it doesn't look like a software revision number of the component card itself. It just lists 68X and its serial number. So I'm not, I don't think you could flash or update those manually anyway. Okay, so this makes more sense. This is a Sega Master System game, and this is the bend that people are talking about, um, or at least I think it is. So this is common to see on uh, the D-Series BVMs. You just need to turn on VCR mode in the settings. So let's see if we can fix that. But as you can see, with composite video, it's not there. So this is definitely related to either the 68X card um, or the way the RGB signal is going through it.
So since the A-series BVMs don't have a VCR mode to try, I'm going to try a few different components to see if anything could help. So I have the G-SCART switch here plugged in, which has a good sync stripper built in, um, and uh, no change, whether it's toggled or not. So let's try something else. So now I have an Extron 203 RXI in the mix, which is a device I always like to use to clean up sync, obviously going from uh, the G-SCART into that, and it actually makes it worse, believe it or not. Um, I don't know how or why or what else, but you can see by toggling it, DDSP, both that and the serration don't really help anything. So let's see what else I got. Okay, so there's one more thing to look at here. Um, my buddy Joel actually suggested that I try the Extron 580XI. So as you can see, we have everything the same running through the G-SCART. You see how there's still the bend, but then when you toggle the comp sync switch, everything's fine. Um, which is really strange, because I don't know what comp sync would mean other than that, it, does this toggle between TTL and 75 ohm composite sync? I'm not really sure, but as you can see, but to make things a little bit weirder, so with this on, let's just turn the Genesis off and back on again. So now, now the bend is there for the Genesis side that wasn't there before. Um, so I'll just go back into the 240p suite. So in playing around with this, um, one of the things I tested was just a direct cable that's um, SCART to VGA, just a pass through. Um, but as you can see, in a Genesis game, you have the bend. But if we come over here to the G-SCART switch and switch it from um, RGBS to RGBHV, now it's perfect. Um, what well, if you have comp sync off? You get a vertical scroll, but with comp sync on, it looks fine, including the scroll test. So even with so this might be the combination that people need to fix it. They need a, a converting um, the signal to RGB HV so that the 580i reads it the way it wants to uh, with comp sync on into this. So let me just turn it off and back on again. So as you can see there's no weirdness in the menu. Let me go into oh, wrong, wrong menu. SMS ROM. So as you can see there's no bend in the side and this is obviously Genesis. And Let's just go back to the same game just to make it easier. Still perfect. So, an odd solution, but it seems like this might actually be a solution. So I better reach out to everybody I know that has the 68X and tell them to buy a 580XI before I shoot this video so it won't jack up the price on eBay. <laughs> so most people can't afford or find the 68X RGB card, but the 61D actually has composite video and SDI inputs, as well as S-Video. So of course you don't want composite and S-Video is good, but what about SDI? So that's when we just have the Extron VSC 700. I'm trying to get it in focus and in light here. Um, but basically this is just a converter that can take any RGB HV or RGB S signal, I tried both and both worked fine, and convert it out to SDI. So um, as you can see, it works for this, but everything is in 480i. So I have here um, just a test, and it's really shaky. You probably can't see it in the video. Um, I have the HD Retrovision test suite, uh, which is really handy for a million reasons. But one of them is you press one button. Now it's 480i. Press the same button again. Now it's 240p. But as you can see on the screen, it never changes. You could even see the uh, you could see it come up, but you still see the scan lines and the shakiness of it doesn't make a difference. So this VSC 700 is obviously processing everything into 480i, so we don't even have the ability to test uh, with this unit if the monitor can even read it. Now 240p is not a uh, part of the compatibility list of SDI, so let's see what else I got. So my buddy Joel brought out 
this beast. Yeah, this is a thing, actually. And believe it or not, I think it's a VCR. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's odd, but it also does conversions. And this one particularly does um, YPB PR component video. Uh, so we're using the HD retrovision cables to SDI output. Uh, and as you can see, it's the same thing as before. We're both interlaced and non interlaced. Um, uh, it comes out actually as 480i, so it converts it. Um, and also, the, as you, I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but the image gets very unstable and jumpy. So um, it's not really the best solution for this at all. Uh, might even can't tell it, but the whole screen's jumpy. So once again, we're not getting 240p through it. Okay, there's one last crazy solution that my buddy Joel figured out. So basically, you go from the console. Uh, into the OSSC in line double mode. Then that goes into an Extron uh, DVI RGB 150, um, and then out RGBS into the Extron 700D. Then from there, it goes gets through the SDI output into the SDI input card of the A series BVM. So let me just go through that again. <laughs> Console to OSSC to RGB 150 to 700D to SDI into the console. Um, and while this does output 480i, it looks good. I mean, I, I really hate interlaced sig signals, and I know it's impossibly hard to figure or to check out in the videos, but this doesn't look nearly as bad as your average interlaced video. Um, while you don't get the exact 240p scan lines that you would, um, and let me zoom in on the tree. So the scan lines don't look the same, and they are a little shaky, but considering how much this costs compared to a BKM68X card, um, you might actually be able to get one of these cheap enough to make it worthwhile till you actually, especially if the A-Series is the only one you could find, um, or if you just, you know, you're waiting to, to buy the other one. Um, I do want to show one thing, though. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to come out in the video. Maybe I'll just add another quick shot of it afterwards. But uh, I just wanted to show the difference between what 480i looks like directly and through the 700D. So if you see interlace, you can see how fuzzy that is. Um, and that's 480i in. And that's pretty much how it looked before when we went directly. But now if you see not, let me do it again so you can see the... So the word non-interlace was only up there for a second, but you could see uh, how much sharper it was. So overall, while it's a little nutty, it's a perfectly good solution. The only thing, uh, two things about it, is it is 480i, um, and I believe the 700D would add a frame of lag. So it's not the end of the world, but um, if you're waiting on uh, an interim solution, it's certainly cheaper than a 68X. So the one last thing before I go, um, I have this exact same um, HD SDI converter. So this basically takes um, HDMI input and outputs directly to HD SDI. Uh, I have the same one that's stuck in storage somewhere. Uh, Joel has this one, which we think is dead because it won't output anything at all. But one solution potentially would be um, Genesis into an or any console into an OSSC into this outputting 720p uh, and then of course the screen um, you would have letterbox on the top and bottom and then you would have only the screen in the middle so you might be able to set some kind of zoom command um, and even if it worked it's still it's it's not going to look like 240p or 480i the scan lines are pretty much going to be non-existent um, and there isn't really a 480p solution um, you know, using the OSSC and 480p mode with scan lines turned on, if you could get that working through SDI, it would pretty much be 240p and zero lag. But that's something I have to work on, and I would love if any of you guys had a solution or would be able to help test SDI. I just don't think you could get any 480p signal into either um, HD SDI or SDI. So that's pretty much it for this one. As always, you know, any comments and criticism, please leave them below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about all this. Um, and one step closer to, you know, to getting the BKM68X or anything else for the A series to make these more functional and usable for all of us, because they're generally much newer and easier to find. Uh, it's just impossible to find those RGB cards. 
So thanks, and I'll see you guys next time.